Okay, this is a quick video uh, that I am going to cover for my new radiator. This is for a 1930 Ford Model A. It's a truck. And uh, I thought it was interesting to compare the old and new radiator since I have the original radiator baffles but not the original core. So um, this is from Brassworks. So this is the box that came in and it was packaged very well so what they do is um, they got this method they have these plastic bags and they can fill them with uh, this uh, expandable soft material kind of like using attics or whatever and they they put the radiator in the box here and that's the bag you can see down the bottom what they do is they set the radiator in and put this protective uh, stuff around it so when it ships in the box it's very protected so it um, it was well protected in shipping and handling when it reached my house so that was a good job on their part uh, comparing the two they're kind of interesting so looking at let me kind of zoom out no I can't let me try to come back so um, first thing I notice is the weight so again this is uh, it's the original upper and lower tank. Uh, this is not the original core. I, I wish in retrospect I would have kept the original core. At the time I went to a radiator shop and uh, this doesn't look original and I had issues after that and just um, um, I've tried to keep this original one going as long as possible and ironically it doesn't leak but it overheats and so if I was gonna have to replace the core again I just thought I would go with a you know a new reproduction radiator, but when you lift this, that's pretty you know it's, it's a good weight there. Um, the Brassworks one, it's definitely noticeably lighter. I don't know where it's shaving that weight off. Uh, it's supposed to be the way it's advertised is they say this actually cools better than a stock radiator for how they manufacture or design it, but it definitely doesn't have. It's not as heavy. Um, the other thing I noticed is the, um, if you come up here, and yeah, I had mine, uh, mine's not painted, but I, I had mine polished. I like it polished on the top. That was kind of a cool look. Uh, these lines are very pronounced in the radiator. In the Brassworks one, they're kind of, uh, they're not as edged, and they're, they're smoothed over, kind of, um, they're just not as pronounced, so maybe the mold they use isn't like the original. Um, another thing, now I ordered a few special things on mine that make it cost more. So one is, if you look at the dimples, so a Ford, originally Model A, these little uh, cooling vents, they're dimpled. And I wanted to get back the original look, so that's an extra cost. And the other thing, I don't know why this is an extra cost, but you see this uh, crease going down the side here? Um, this is like the original, so if you look at the one next door here, you can see the original Model A radiator has this crease, so they're able to preserve that. So, so it looks very, so the idea is that this looks very similar to the original radiator. Now, um, the other thing I tested on it, let me bring this up, is you got a radiator cap, right? So you wanna see, does your quail fit on there? And um, this is the original one, so I know it fits. So that's on there. Now, interesting when I so you think it would fit on the Brassworks one too, right? Well, <laughs> it wasn't even going down at all. So if you look in here, the reason is uh, the original radiator, this overflow, can you get that in the light? This overflow pipe, uh, it's bent. And that's to allow you know the, the cap to fit on there better and also so it doesn't overflow so easy. And also it's pretty high up. The Brassworks one, they did not bend it. It's right there. 
So I need to figure out, um, you know, I shouldn't have to do this because these guys are supposed to be pros. They manufacture a lot of these and no cap is going to go on there like that. So uh, I need to find out the right way to bend it so I don't crack it because this is brand new. Uh, so that's a disappointment. Um, but otherwise, and if I flip them around real quick. One, and the other, so a, f a few things I've heard from previous Model A owners is this, uh, this pipe at the bottom where the water comes out into the engine uh, there have been issues I've heard with other, maybe the brass works too, about the hose is not fitting properly on there um, because of the diameter. They look about the same, but I'll obviously test with the, I got hoses, so I'll make sure that they fit properly. Um, the curve, the overflow pipe, so curved and welded down here. Uh, in the brass works, this is tucked in on the side in here. It's actually a nice integrated look. Um, on this one, I don't know if this originally came from the factory or not, but this pipe, this overflow pipe is actually on top. It's not embedded in there. Um, so I don't know why. Um, it's just not, so I don't know if that was maybe done afterwards or not. But otherwise, um, you know, you want to, I want to make sure the, the mounting brackets, well, actually, I measure the top here. I don't have a, um, and you want to measure these diameter, like the height and how it sits on the frame and where it connects with the radiator shell. This is, these are all important things because, um, if they don't match up right, your hood is not going to be aligned with your cowl. And so as I start working with a new Brassworks radiator, uh, I'll see how it fits in my Model A, but... That's where I am so far, so the next video will be uh, hopefully assembling and seeing how it looks in the car. Okay, here's an update on installing the Brassworks radiator for my Ford Model A. Uh, so it fit in on the frame uh, as designed, as intended, so that's the uh, passenger and the driver's side frame bolt, so it bolted right onto the frame, no problem. I have rubber insulation pads underneath it. Um, the issue earlier around this uh, overflow tube that was not bent, I couldn't get my uh, cap on. I used a punch. Um, this is a 5 32nd punch. And it's just a really thin piece of metal. You could do a 1 8 or maybe a, a 3 16 but I just put it in the, you gotta be, you know, I put it in there and slowly bent it towards the front. Uh, be careful when you do this. If you don't want to crack your brand new radiator again, they should have done this before they shipped it. But it is brass, so you know it's softer than this metal. So just be careful and slightly bend that. So now I can put my. Uh, you can see I already scraped up the neck there, but. So now the radiator cap will fit on okay. So good news. And really for any Model A cap that has this uh, thermostat that goes down, uh, you want to make sure that clears that tube when you get a new radiator. Okay, and I also want to... Um, no, I've not put the radiator shell yet on. So, you know, these mounts here on the top and the bottom, I've not put the radiator shell on yet. That's usually the more difficult part of this job. Um, I have put liquid in there, so I went ahead and mixed the coolant, 50-50 uh, mix I use, and I do that to check the leaks. So before you put everything back together and you still have the hood off, because it's easier to get the things, you can check your pipe down here if there's leaks. Now. There's something I have here that's optional, but I highly recommend it, especially if you have a brand new radiator that's expensive. You'll see this little inline filter here. 
in the top tube. Um, this is called, I'm going to put a shout out to these guys here. Let me pull uh, uh, This company is called Gano. And you can find them online like Gano.com and see Gano Auto and Coolant Filter. And you can actually use these for any, you know, iron block engine, but very good for Model A. So this will catch, and I have one of my other Model A. This definitely, it catches, especially in an older engine that hasn't been rebuilt in a while, or even a new engine. This will capture all the rust and particles and all kinds of crud that comes out of your, you know, 90-year-old engine or how many years it's been. And it keeps it from going into your brand new filter. So this keeps this in better shape. It won't clog and it'll last longer. So I'm going to run it before uh, I put the radiator shell on just to see, again, check for leaks and uh, how it's cooling. Okay, next step and finishing up with this Brassworks radiator. Um, I actually took uh, I took a bit of time since my last video recording, so let me uh, give you an update. So the next step is uh, getting the radiator shell on and positioned so that it fits, the body fits and the hood fits. You want all the gaps to try to fit as even as possible. Uh, I'll admit on my uh, truck, it's, it's not as even. So for example, uh, if we start at the top of the hood near the cowl, uh, there's a gap there, not too bad, but then as you see, we come along here, uh, that gap gets narrow, and then it gets pretty close um, to this, uh, what's this thing that goes around the cowl? Um, anyway, that aluminum or uh, stainless steel piece that goes there. So it doesn't, it doesn't rub, which is good, but I think what I've come to the conclusion, which is beyond the scope of this video, is... Uh, my cab, I think over the years, has about to shift slightly on the frame. And if that alignment just, if it just shifts a little bit, everything else will be out of alignment, like the hood and the radiator. If we look at the radiator side, um, you know, pretty good gap here. But as we come across here, you can see the lacing underneath. So the uh, protective lacing that goes on the radiator shell. Uh, I can see that, and then you can see the gap, all of a sudden it gets, the gap closes as we get down here a bit to the bottom, uh, and there's a little, there's a little damage here from previous, I, this used to be way off with the old radiator, so this is actually improvement, believe it or not. You want to make sure your hood latches, when you put the new radiator in and get things adjusted, these latches should easily latch and unlatch. You shouldn't have to struggle with these. If you do, you're going to have to adjust the height. Um, as I open this up, where you have options to adjust are, do you see these two rods right here at the top? Uh, you can unloosen those nuts. Uh, I think they're 9 16 I'm not sure, or one half. You can move, you can adjust the radiator that uh, clamp, oh, let me see if I can do this. Uh, yeah, let's put it on my head. <laughs> okay, you can loosen these up and you can actually twist, you can adjust the radiator kind of like in and out. You can move it on this, uh, is this horizontal plane, is that right? Uh, to get it aligned a little bit better, which is what I did. But at some point, you hit the bottom here in this nut. You can only adjust this back so much. So you can. You can adjust it a little bit that way with these, uh, but it only gives you a little bit of flexibility, not too much. Also, when you're adjusting here, I found this out the hard way, you'll have to loosen your hose clamps, and you want to drain your coolant fluid before you do that, because with your hose clamps on tight, you're not going to be able to adjust, you know, twist, move this radiator around a bit to get alignment with your hood. So you want to loosen your hose clamps as you're adjusting, it's not a big deal, just, you know, drain your coolant and fill it back up later. Uh, what else? Also, you have options here um, on each, there's two holes on each side of the radiator shell. So there's one there where it, there's a bolt here, you see it connects right in there. You have some flexibility to move this in and out by um, maybe slightly over drilling this hole a little bit, not much, just slightly, and then you can kind of 
move this back and forth a little bit, you have some adjustment there. You also have a hole down here as well. So I can't get to that one as well. But same thing down here, while everything's loose, you can move this radiator shell in and out a bit to get better alignment with your hood. And of course you've got a, you can't see them now, but the bolts that go into the frame, it's too dark here, you can't see. But you also have the bottom bolts I mainly use those for like adjusting the height of the radiator, not so much the twist from left and right. So, and if we go over on this side, uh, we got good alignment here. So, <laughs> on this passenger side, between my radiator shell and the hood, uh, that's really tight. It doesn't overlap, but it's tight. And it's actually tight all the way down. So that is a good fit there. The hood latches, again, they go up, you know, the hood latches on both uh, go up and down. I can unlatch and latch easily. There shouldn't be really a strain to get them up to the top and latch them. And then over here, where I said earlier, I think I got bigger issues with my cowl sitting on the cab, sitting on the frame. I, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but uh, at least it's even. So here's the gap size here between the hood and the cowl. And you can see it's actually pretty even all the way down to the bottom, even to here. So probably a little bit more of a gap than I want, but I can live with that if the radiator, you know, works fine. So... I knew this would be tricky, like getting this radiator, when you're putting it all together and you put the shell on, you're aligning up to the hood, uh, especially with a brand new radiator. So the dimensions will never be 100% with your old radiator. You know, they're close, but uh, you're gonna have to make some adjustments to make sure the gap here against the hood and the gap going back to the cab here where your gas tank and cowl is. Uh, you may have to do more work than you expect, but you know, I'd say the main things are just, you know, you've got the, the rods in here to adjust. You've got these two holes here in the radiator shell to like, to move it back and forth a little bit and just make sure you want these to latch. Like, you know, you don't want to have these really difficult to latch and unlatch. That's not a fun experience. Anyway, um, you know, it's not perfect, but I think I can live with this. So the next step now is I haven't put the new Brassworks radiator. It looks good, by the way, right? I mean, it looks, uh, looks a lot better than the old radiator. Um, I haven't put this under strain yet. It's actually winter right now. The weather's cool. Uh, I've ran it a few times, so I know it doesn't leak. I know it's, it's fine. Uh, but I haven't put it under strain in hot weather yet. And that's the real test because in my uh, Model A here, where I was running in hot weather and uh, I would get a bunch of fluid out of here, and I wasn't sure if it was, um, uh, I suspect it was because of the radiator, the old one, but I'll find out with the new radiator. Uh, one more thing when you're adjusting the shell, when I was putting this back in, uh, I got a bit of a scrape here. If you have a stainless steel finish, it may not show as bad, you can buff it out, but this is a truck and this is a painted shell, and you can see right there where I was twisting the quail on and off, uh, I got a bit of a scrape here. The old one, uh, the old radiator with this shell didn't scrape. So um, I probably, you know, I got a, it's too late now I scraped it. <laughs> so I may touch it up later or something. Uh, it's not that noticeable unless you really look close, but I can see it. Um, so when you're putting your radiator cap back on, um, make sure you're seeing it fits properly around your radiator shell. You don't want this to scrape, you know, if you can help it. Uh, and again, it's all about just the little adjustments you're doing as you're tightening down the bolts, as you're tightening down these rods under the hood here. You're all just kind of just trying to get everything well adjusted so it'll fit back together.